Financial markets attract many different people from all walks of life. There is, however, one type of market participant who is a little bit different from everybody else. They don't see the market in terms of risk and reward or strategic investment with rate of return like the rest of us. They think of it as an ongoing puzzle that they are constantly trying to solve. There's someone who sees the world in a slightly different way. They're looking for an edge that no one else has spotted. They're usually highly intelligent, persistent and ironically disliked by the market participants that they take advantage of. They are the traders who are into arbitrage. This week we're going to look at the trading concept of arbitrage and what it means. It's a trading approach that is a little different from anything else that we've looked at so far in this series. Let's start with a textbook dictionary definition. Arbitrage is essentially the buying of bills of exchange in one market and selling them in another. Okay, so whilst this is true, it really doesn't capture the essence of what arbitrage actually is. Arbitrage is the art and science of studying trading opportunities in great detail to the point of obsession, where you are looking for a gap, a loophole and an edge that no one else has spotted. You then exploit it as much as you can for as much profit as you can that is virtually risk free. But arbitrage is nothing new, it's been around for a long time, so let's take a look at an example of how it works. In the classic trading book, The Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, it tells a really interesting story about how the adoption of the telephone created arbitrage opportunities on the New York Stock Exchange. What basically would happen is the New York Stock, Stock Exchange would send out their prices via a teletyping pool that was attached to the exchange. Those prices on a data feed would then basically go to all the different retail brokerages around the country. At the time, a lot of retail brokerages were they were basically known as what was called bucket shops, where people would go in and they would place their orders. Now, what a few customers started to figure out was that if they were to start to use the telephone and work in teams, they could have one guy at the exchange who would watch the prices and then telephone through to somebody who was close to the bucket shop and tell them what was going on and what stocks had moved and what the prices were at that particular time. He would then be able to take that information and because the telephone system was quicker than the teletyping pool that the New York Stock Exchange was using, he was able to then go into the bucket shop and be able to know before the bucket shop what stocks were about to move. You would therefore be able to place an order and be able to gain an advantage over the bucket shop and be able to make money out of the market that way. This highlights two key aspects about arbitrage. The first one is that arbitrage opportunities are essentially risk-free or as close to risk-free as possible. This is because the opportunity itself offers an advantage that others haven't yet understood or noticed. The second point is that arbitrage opportunities don't occur very often and they're usually very time sensitive. There's a window of opportunity to take advantage and maximize profits. As soon as the loophole is discovered, those who are being taken advantage of will move very quickly to close the loophole and the window of opportunity has vanished. Arbitrage is therefore about the endless search for loopholes to exploit. Timing the trades perfectly whilst doing so in a way that won't attract attention and making money whilst the going is good because it won't last forever. Arbitrage trading also highlights an element of human behaviour which some people find uncomfortable. It tends to evoke strong emotions. Arbitrages are either loved by those who admire their genius or hated by those in the system who feel that they've been taken advantage of. Let's examine the bucket shop story in a little more detail. The advantage of knowing the change in stock price sooner than the bucket shop allowed the customer to buy stock before the bucket shop listed the latest prices. So, did the arbitrager have an unfair advantage? Were his actions unscrupulous? Or was he just more efficient and faster than everyone else? It's a debatable question and your view depends on which side of the fence you might sit. But what's important to remember is that economics has no moral code. It is always neutral against the emotions of the participants. Think of it this way. 
If there's money on the table, who does it belong to? Arbitrages would say that it belongs to whoever walks over and picks it up. So can you use arbitrage as a trading concept? Yes, you most certainly can. There is nothing to stop anyone from searching for opportunities which no one else has spotted. But it's a competitive game and you've got to be fast. To get you started, here's three quick approaches which have all been both popular and lucrative. Cryptocurrency arbitrage has been around for a few years now and it works by exploiting the price differences from one exchange to another. So for example, if Ethereum trades at two different locations with two different prices, arbitragers will buy the lower price and then sell the higher price, pocketing the difference. In Forex, a popular form of arbitrage is where people use algos to measure the differences between the prices of three different currencies. The discrepancies arise in situations where one market is undervalued against another which is overvalued. The algos spot price differentials and execute a trade by converting one currency into a second and a second into a third and then the third finally back to the first. This is called triangular arbitrage. But you've got to be fast though because those windows of opportunities close very quickly indeed. Another popular market to arbitrage is the oil market. People search for small differences between the price of Brent crude and WTI. Then they attempt to buy or sell one whilst at the same time taking an opposite position in the opposing market and waiting for the gap to be closed. Remember, arbitrage trading is a different kind of approach to making a financial return in the market. However, it's just as valid as anything else as long as you understand the opportunities don't come around very often. You have to be quick and keep it quiet. Next week, we will take a look at the concept of trading into market analysis.